Oh, good morning. Welcome to Flint's News Talk, 1470. WFNT. Listen, busy, busy weekend. Holy cow, lots going on. Lots going on over the weekend. We had uh, Michael Moore back in town. We had uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson in town. Saturday and Sunday protests, uh, all kinds of things going on. We had the announcement that uh, Amir Hekmati uh, was going to be released and um, three others as well uh, from Iran. And uh, uh, Representative uh, Dan Kildee uh, went over to Germany to meet him for the first time. He's been working on getting him released for a long time. Um, Jason picked something up in the uh, State of the Union that I, I hadn't noticed. Uh, Jason Cooper at the end, as the president's leaving out, you see him shaking hands with people. And uh, I, I noticed uh, Kildee working his way toward him to try and uh, uh, get his ear uh, or shake his hand or get the photo op or whatever it is. And um, uh, Jason said that it, it looked a little tense, and he wondered if he was bringing up uh, Hekmati, which was, which was interesting. Wouldn't, that would make some sense. Um, because I know he's been pushing for it, but, you know, that was, uh, I'm sure, part of the plan. It's not an accident that they were uh, released this weekend, the same weekend that, you know, over $100 billion was released as part of this uh, deal with Iran over uh, nuclear development and, uh, and uh, restrictions, supposedly to prevent them from uh, developing a nuclear weapon. So, uh, so that came about, and, and then earlier in the week, we had the, uh, last week, we had the uh, uh, sailors uh, who were captured. They didn't keep them very long. Uh, the administration saying, you know, if we hadn't been working with them on the nuke deal, this could have been a lot worse. Um, but there's interesting stuff on that. You know, there's, there's just so much going on. But uh, water, the big thing here locally, obviously. We're going to talk with... Uh, uh, former Mayor Dean Walling, he's on his way in. We're going to talk with him in just a little bit as well. There's a lot going on. You know, there's a lot of people that have jumped on this, lots and lots of people. And uh, t- even talking last week with, uh, with Sherman that, uh, you know, you've got a lot of people who are, you know, this thing is moving uh, with a full head of steam, and you got a lot of folks jumping in now. Hi there, uh, Flint's News Talk. Hello? Hello? Hey, Flint's News Talk. Hi, who's this? Hey, this is Jeremy. Jeremy, what's going on? Not much. Uh, we got the cold weather going on. Seen Jesse yesterday. Oh, did you go and see him? Yeah. What did you think? Well, it, was, it was pretty lively. There could have been more people there. There should have been about five times more people there. How about how many people were there? Oh, about, I'd have to say 300. About 300, okay. And yeah, this was, at, at least 250 crammed inside the building. 250, and this was at the, uh, at the, uh, at the city hall? No, that, that was when Michael Moore did his thing. Michael Moore's was, was at, at city, hall. city Hall. This was at the church. Yeah, this is at the uh, Heavenly Host Church of the Harvest. All right. So, Jeremy, have you been on this for a while? Is this something that you've been working on? Yeah, I've been following it ever since it began. Okay. Um, well, well this, the whole um, lead for certain yeah. since that, that yeah. was well known. But prior to this, no one was really paying any attention, including myself. Okay. So what did you think of Jesse Jackson? What did you think of the speakers? Uh, I think they had that poor old Jesse up there standing too long. They should have let him sit a little more, but the speakers were great. I was amazed to see uh, Stanley there. Woodrow Stanley, former Mayor Woodrow Stanley. Yep. Did he speak as well? Yes, he did. Okay, what did he have to say? He had to say that uh, we need to get the Army Corps of Engineers, just like Jesse was saying, and more, to boost the production of getting these pipelines replaced. Yeah. Other than that, you know, you're looking at a five-year mess. Yeah. Yep, it's, uh, well, the the good news is, uh, obviously, there's a lot of resources. We just had uh, the uh, president, uh, that uh, state of emergency, uh, went from the county to the state where the uh, governor signed off on that. He sent it up to the uh, federal level. The president just signed off on that. So hopefully those resources are coming, right? Oh, they're definitely going to come. And yeah. uh, I'm fairly certain that Obama's going to visit Flint after the auto show. He, he has no choice but to. Yeah. If he doesn't, he's going to be hated on him big time. <laughs> Jeremy, I appreciate the call. All righty, thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for calling in. Jeremy went to the uh, to the protest over the weekend. Uh, did you seven four three eight two five five and now joined as promised? Uh, uh, Dean Wallach from Mayor uh, City of Flint. Thank you so much for coming in. Hey, you're welcome, Dan. Good morning, everyone. Listen, uh, I got to tell you, this is a uh, this has gone from you know we don't know what's going on uh, to everybody 
talking about this. This is a freight train that's moving down the rails at a, a pretty good clip, uh, no stopping it now. And I think that it's good to just lay out what happened, go back through this timeline a little bit, because there's a couple things in particular. And uh, we talked a little bit on Friday. And, uh, y- you know, there's a couple things that I want to I wanna talk about regarding uh, the decision to switch, especially, and also on the uh, treatment for corrosion with phosphates. And uh, those are the two big things. You've seen the memes where, you know, and you hear a lot of the folks uh, nationally who are saying, you know, they wanted to save $100 a day, that that was the reason for not treating the water, that they didn't mind uh, poisoning uh, kids in the city of Flint because it would have cost $100 a day. When, when we were talking about this, uh, one of the things that, that came up, and, and this is what happened, you had the MDEQ saying, we can't start treating for corrosion until after we do two rounds of testing. This was the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. This, was the, this is the crux of the uh, misinterpretation of the lead and copper rule, correct? That's right. I mean, this what's so tragic about this is when that admission was made by former DEQ director Dan Wyan. Who's now gone. In October 2015. It was, it was clear that all of this could have been avoided from the beginning. But the Department of Environmental Quality, which has to allow every, every aspect of the Flint treatment process, and it's not just Flint. I mean, Everywhere. The, the state's Office of Drinking Water, with delegated authority from the Environmental Protection Agency, has to permit every treatment process for drinking water all across the state. So local municipalities don't have the authority, the right, to just start adding, subtracting no. chemicals to do. They've got to be overseen. By no, and, the, you, and none of us would, would want that, if you think about it. If mm-hmm. you step back and say, do you, do you want you know somebody at your local water treatment plant making decisions about you know the drinking water for the entire community? It, it's just so tragic that... We were being told, including myself, I mean, I was out there right in front saying our, our water meets the standards. Right. Well, when the DEQ director admits in October 2015 that the lead and copper rule in the Safe Drinking Water Act wasn't properly applied from the beginning, so and you then had, no. everyone is left shaking their heads. But yeah. the real problem is that was October 2015. Right. Yeah, We're now the, in January yeah. of 2016, and, and everyone, you know, Michael Moore, the, the president, um, people who care all across the country are, are getting involved in this issue. The public health emergency was declared by Genesee County. The public health emergency was declared in October of 2015. Right. And where, then, was, where was the money to right. fix yeah. Flint's damaged pipes? Yep. To support our, our kids who have been affected. The, the state had money to fit, uh, to test the pipes in schools, but today there's still no money to fix the problems in the schools. Well, it's, it's, uh, so it, it's it, coming. Okay. Right? Do you think it's not coming? How much is it going to take to replace those lines? Well, the, the lead service lines are, are going to take 40 to $50 million dollars. Okay. Whoever does it, whether it's the Army Corps mm-hmm. or whether it's contractors, it's going to take forty to fifty million dollars to replace a lead. And and I called for the first ten million in September. Mm-hmm. And you know what? the The first two to three thousand of those lines could already be done mm-hmm. because we had September, October. We had a warm November. We had a warm December. The city's fifty fifty sidewalk program was running all the way through December. Right alongside those crews, you could have had lead service lines being replaced. But, now let me, and, and the state didn't step up. Now and, they, and we're going to hear tomorrow night whether Governor Snyder, and just is it going to be real simple? Yeah. Does Governor Snyder pledge $50 million to replace lead service lines? They already have, haven't they? I haven't heard $50 million. That's that's I know that's what Ananick is calling for. That's what Ananick's calling for. Now and, the, and, rep, and, and State Senator Ananick has been great on on this issue. Uh, Senator Ananick's not the one giving the state of the state. Right. 
So let's let's hear. Okay. If we're going to keep score tomorrow night. Okay. Does Governor Snyder call for forty to fifty million dollars to replace lead service lines? I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'm going to say yes. What are you going to say? No. You're going to say no. Okay. Why not? Because every time this community has called for assistance, we've gotten a fraction of what we needed. Okay. So, uh, and obviously, I, I, I want I want that to change. I, I'm like everyone well, no, else. We, I want it to change, but it has. But the situation has changed. There's the, there's tremendous pressure on. There's it. pressure. Yeah. There's tremendous pressure. Yeah. So, so now this the the state is the state responsible for the fact that we've got these lines that are, you know, so decrepit that are in such bad shape. Is, uh, no, and, and and this is. The, they're gonna they're they, gonna come through with that money. I'll, I'll guarantee they, it. They 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 have to, because, the corrosion control, that's been required in drinking water systems since the early 1990s. That's that's when the, Det- the Detroit system started using the the phosphate. And we're back to Detroit water, and that we're took part and in no, it was within that, weeks. That was in weeks. October, and that was a you know that was one time when this community, including myself, said. We've got to get back to Detroit. And the governor right. stepped up, provided the money for it. Mott Foundation right. provided the money for it. That was, a, that was a success. And unfortunately, you know, the efforts really stalled after that. Now you know, we got that, that $12 million committed. Um, and now we need, we need money for the lead service lines. Mm-hmm. You know, that's about $50 million. Uh, we need dedicated funds to support our children who have been lead poisoned how much is that because this is one of the things right. there's a, uh, annex called for 50 million dollars uh, uh mayor karen weaver mm-hmm. is, is looking for over a billion 1.5 billion she says is going to be the total number where does that number come yeah, from the the 1.5 billion i think that's an that's not for infrastructure that is for infrastructure that, that's not just for the lines it's not getting rid of the lead though it's no, for that's, that's an entire that's replacing the entire 700 mile system across the city but it's more than that as well it's also juvenile justice i mean there's all sorts of things that are that are part of that request are there not she, she has also called for funds uh, rightly so uh, for those other for the human um, costs but the the 1.5 billion was uh, an estimate of what it would cost to replace the entire 700 million dollar but it's uh, 700 it's, mile system so if it so, but if it's if it's more than if it if it covers other things as well, if it yeah. covers, you know, I I know like uh, Dr. Uh, Mona Hanna Tisha has, has also she wants to do some things with kids mm-hmm. nutritionally. Right. They want to do some interventions. Yeah, those to are see critical. If, right, but but all this stuff is extra. So so the actual infrastructure part to replace uh, the 700 miles of lines completely. How much is that aspect I, alone? I I understand that that estimate was is about 1.5 billion. Just for that, for the but, but in from what I know, um, it's most important that about fifty million dollars of of critical Those service lines. Well, service lines, but also fifty another fifty million for critical infrastructure projects get done. The the total rebuild would be one point five billion. That that would take place Everything. over many many years right. as part of a long term capital improvement plan. But there's a need for uh, about. Know, 50 million in critical infrastructure. We, we, there's a uh, a few miles of main mm-hmm. that that serve the the center west part of the city, okay. uh, where the valves um, haven't been operational, where the water's not circulating well. Okay. That that compounds a bad problem. Right. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you're addressing the most important crucial areas. Yep. Right. The lead service lines, the critical infrastructure, and and there's one more part of this that we have. So to that's talk about a hundred million right there for that. Right. Those two together. Okay. But there's one more thing we have to talk about, and and this, the the governor talks a lot about uh, people and and people in this state being customers, and and you deserve, if you're a customer, um, you deserve, you know, to get what you pay for, and for a year and a half, you know, we were told, including myself, that. The water we were getting out of our pipes was meeting the safe drinking water well, standards. No, we weren't because we knew right off the bat that there was a problem with bacteria. And then we knew that there was a problem with TTHMs. And then we knew early on from Miguel del Toro that there was a problem with lead. So, I mean, there were indications 
almost from the beginning that there were problems. There were problems for sure. Um, but those were, the way I look at it, is those are, those are different kinds of problems. Uh, there there are, are, are tests for, you know, coliform and bacteria that show up in water systems all across this state every year. There's, uh, we've had it when we've been on Detroit. It, it, it occasionally happens. And there was notices that were given. Everything was done in those cases properly under the Safe Drinking Water Act. Except that there was also this, this one thing as well, and we talked about this previously, was the was the the lack of an ability to treat to filter before chlorinating right now that was that was that required some capital investment that wasn't done for a filtration system so that you could treat the water before uh, chlorinating it yeah the new filter and that that made a, a major improvement in the treatment process my point is and and this is this is how I feel is that you know everyone in this community um, paid for water that we were told in October, you know, wasn't properly treated from the beginning. Right. MDEQ, huge responsibility, really on the hook. And I think that, that? and I think the, I I don't, I don't know. And I've, that's why I've supported the calls for legislative hearings, the uh, other investigations. I mean, I, I support all those things because we need to get an answer. But what we know already is that Flint's water customers who paid bills were told um, by the state were, were told by me mm-hmm. that the water was meeting the standards right we we now know as of October that the state did not regulate the water properly so I believe our customers should get a refund and I think uh, that's another thing that'll come listen can you hang around yeah all right we're gonna, we're gonna take a break we'll be right back we're talking with uh, a good question D- Dane Walling we're back right after this what's news talk 1470 WFNT fast affordable and delicious isn't that what you're looking for when you go and dining out well that's exactly what you get at the Venus family restaurant for over 30 years clean fresh fully stocked salad bar breakfast starting at $1.99 at the best conies in town Venus can cater parties too and they got great lunch and dinner specials give them a call at 810-235-6911 great place to go always delicious always great service located on Fenton Road near the corner of Hill Road the Venus family restaurant Hubbard's Military Supply is the only place you'll find authentic military equipment and collectibles. And we're not talking about some place that just has a rack of hats and t-shirts. Hubbard's on Richfield Road has been in business for over 20 years for good reason. They carry everything for every branch of the service. Pins, patches, medals, outfits, and more for every rank, unit, and special force from Iraq all the way back to World War I. And Hubbard's can special order anything you're looking for. Gary, Dennis, and Chris are the experts. They can set up shadow boxes for you and make your collection even more unique. And they carry a complete line of everything for law enforcement as well. If you got questions, give them a call at 810-736-7011. Hey, we all know somebody who served our country, so make sure you stop in and pick them up something special. It's like walking through a military museum. I guarantee you're going to find something you want at Hubbard's Military Supply, located on Richfield Road, just west of Genesee Road in Flint. Call them at 736-7011. I'm Dan Smith for Private Plus Mortgage, and now's a great time to refinance your home. Rates are still near historic lows, property values are up, and we want to pay your closing costs. Now that's a formula for saving money. Call Private Plus Mortgage today, 888-220-6200. 888-220-6200. Private Bank of Buckhead, 3 Piedmont Center, Atlanta, Georgia, 30305. Actual terms may vary. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 758195. Call toll free for credit costs and terms. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get Get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 877-752-0193 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 877-752-0193. 
877-752-0193 to take your call now. Call 877-752-0193. That's 877-752-0193. Again, 877-752-0193. Hey, we are back. News Talk, 1470 WFNT. Dan Fuller here. We're talking with uh, Mayor Dane Wong. We appreciate you coming in and answering questions. Um, this is a big, huge deal, and uh, we're going to hear a lot about it uh, tomorrow night in the uh, governor's state of the uh, state. He's obviously under tremendous pressure. Now, we were talking a little bit in the break, and um, <laughs> it's funny. You know, we're talking about shooting the messenger. Brad Werfel is another guy, the spokesman for um, MDQ. He's gone as well. Um, and then the director, Dan Wyatt, the person in charge of the actual department, the water quality in MDEQ, who is overseeing and ultimately responsible, ultimately Dan Wyatt is as well, and it's good that he's, I, I think, uh, accepted responsibility and stepped down. She was moved right away, but she's still there as far as that, we know. That's right? the last I heard of that, too, and, and uh, there, there has to be. That's why these investigations are so important is we have a right to understand who the people were who were making um, the, the recommendations, what their analysis was. Were they biased? Were they looking at costs, not at, not at the law? Uh, we need to know. I mean, the, the leadership has to be held accountable. I know as an elected official, I was up for re-election. That's one way you hold you know, yeah. people a, a accountable. And obviously that was a huge factor. I mean, and that was the it, that was the fact, right? And it, rightly so, because yeah. people were were frustrated and they were angry. I, I know I think about this every day, and I I, I want to make sure that I don't miss the things that I missed while we went through this water crisis. But there was so much, you know, manipulation by different staff, and we're learning more about what the EPA knew at. You know, in February and March and, and what was shared um, or not shared with with us here at the city. I mean, all of that, ha I, I think, has to be thoroughly, thoroughly investigated so we all know, you know, exactly uh, what happened. That's one part of it. The other part, you mentioned the state of the state. Let's, let's get to the solution. You know, while these investigations are underway, let's actually get the money in place to to dig up and replace a lead service line so a house doesn't have that risk, especially the houses with our, our youngest children, uh, the houses with our seniors. Um, th those lines need to be, you know, need to be replaced, and, and it should have started last yeah. fall. And I think that's why the governor is under so much pressure. you got a public health emergency in October, um, and other than connecting to Detroit, where's the rest of the solution now that's you know? in the meantime though, let's get started on it let's that, see absolutely it. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely i think that that's that that's uh that's what people are looking for in the meantime though you know you've got a lot of people who say um and, and a lot of people who are supplying like a palliative in the meantime there's lots and lots of people donating water we had a great event out at the at mm -hmm. the genesee valley center with you back in yeah, uh, the community September. has really really community come together from all over and and you know distributing uh, filters and the sheriffs get going around to houses and the uh, state police and we've got folks from the guard so there's there's people know now but people didn't know for a long time right there was a problem for a long time people didn't know and that's and that's um that's one of the probably most frustrating things you know people were told that it was fine when did you know that there was a problem with lead in the water? And this is when, and thankfully, uh, they did this work where the, the Hurley doctors went in and looked at their own internal data at the hospital. So it wasn't until the Hurley study that, now that's with, that's with respect to lead in people's blood. I'm talking about lead in the water. That was the earliest that you knew that there was a problem with lead in the water. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, what, before then, and, and this is what I look back on, and you talk about the investigation. Because MDQ and, had some had some results that were high as well. Yeah, they did, they did, and and one of the big problems with all this is the lack of disclosure, because all, looking back, all of these tests that were done, the full results should have been made available to myself, to the public, but these tests were done, and then. They only a, only, the a, few, water only a few people knew. Did the did uh, did your DPW the, director know? The, uh, that that question needs to be answered. Do you know if he knew? 
I, I don't know. Okay. And that was one of the last things I had done uh, as mayor was to call for the beginning of the internal investigation because mm -hmm. you have to know the EPA, the DEQ, and city personnel. Who let Howard Croft go? The, the city administrator um, and Howard Croft, DPW director. I, you know, I wasn't there at that point, right. um, but he, he resigned. Yeah. Why did he resign if this was all on DEQ? Why would he have resigned? I, I don't have any more information okay. on it than, than what right. I re read in the papers, but, I mean, there, there clearly were lapses yeah. in, in the department. One of the things that this this comes to the next question that I wanted. This is another thing that's come up recently, and uh, it's this question of uh, uh, Legionnaires' disease. There were some hot, some incidences of it that were unusual, eighty or so cases, um, and there was there were suggestions that this could be tied to the water, right? And there are there are the county health department is saying that they were they were stonewalled uh, from local officials, mm -hmm. not state officials local officials on the possibility that this is this was from the water what can you tell us about that yeah that, that was a concern for me too and um, uh, I think Ron Fonger did a good article on mm -hmm. this in, in the Flint Journal and he yep. went in and, and interviewed the, the public health officials locally um, when I learned that there there wasn't the response from the city you know that was my focus that was March of 2015 we still had an emergency manager in place so those staff weren't you know directly reporting to me but uh, when I became aware of that that that's what I pushed for was th there's no reason why a city shouldn't be providing information when a health department it doesn't matter whether it's about uh, about water or about public safety or, or traffic or whatever whatever the issue is uh, but this is what I mean did about did you feel like you couldn't <clears throat> so you knew about it in March of 2015 or had questions about it then mm -hmm. did you feel like you could go public with that and say hey we need to find out more about that did you put any public pressure on by I, talking about it publicly I, 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 I didn't. Um, I believe that was the role of the, the health department. I mean, they were the ones who were conducting the investigation. Mm -hmm. They were asking for information. Uh, the city needed to supply that information. Yeah. But, but in retrospect, just like we're talking about the, the tests of, of water needing to be disclosed, the, the it work— It took a long time to do that. It, it took a long time to long. do that. And they, and they didn't do it appropriately. And the same thing can be said of the, the public health work. There, there need to be regular disclosures to the public, to elected officials. I'm not just talking about elected officials. I'm talking about to the entire public. What, what are the concerns? What are the risks? Maybe, maybe the health department um, says that the investigation is ongoing, but there needs to be transparency and there needs to be disclosure. Just like with a, a sensitive criminal investigation, I, I didn't feel that as, as mayor, as an elected official, that it would be right for me to you know, go out and make public comment on an investigation. But it is important the, for, for the, an, the county a prosecutor or a police right. chief, yeah. a public health director, I believe should be doing Did they you know, make that the public thing. at all when they ran into trouble? I don't remember that coming up at the I, time. I, no. No, and I, I, the information that they needed ended up getting you know, to them and – um, that, that was an important part of that investigation. I, I don't uh, know that they've made a link. A lot of the cases were, you know, were outside well, of the county. No, but, so. it, but even so, you say, we think it could be. You, I mean, people, it's, it's given people, people the information they need. Right. But when you've got all these other problems that mm -hmm. are, are going on as yeah. well, that would be something that people should know so they can make their own choices. Make, right. And th that's, that's where we've got to go with all this, w whether it's water, public health, tests investigations those have to be disclosed to the public and, yeah. and the people who know the most about them the chiefs of police the public health director the the prosecuting attorney uh, prosecutors there needs to be more disclosure on all on all of this that's um, the biggest lesson in, in retrospect disclosure disclosure mm -hmm. test results investigations the the people who are uh, looking at these need to be required to disclose. I, I don't care whether an emergency manager is in place or not. It, it shouldn't be a choice about yeah. whether there's disclosure. It, it all needs to be disclosed on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis. So these things don't go on for a year, a year and a half. Do you think that the governor, I know there's been calls on him to release internal emails and so forth. They don't have to do that. 
Uh, do you think that they will? Do you think that they should disclose? They that absolutely term? should. Yeah. I mean, I know when I sat in my desk and, you know, when Dr. Mark Edwards asked for, um, put in a FOIA request for all my emails mm -hmm. with the EPA and the DEQ, you know, he had them within, you know, a, a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, th that's important. Yeah. I mean, I, when, when I sit at my desk as mayor, I'm being paid by taxpayers mm -hmm. to be there. The taxpayers are paying the bill on City Hall, on the heat, on the electricity. Uh, I'm there in a public function, mm -hmm. and the people have a right to know what's being done. Yeah. What? When did you talk to Dr. Hedman at the EPA? When? When? When did you uh, hear from the Department of Environmental Quality? We're all working for the public, mm -hmm. and that should be disclosed. And I, I hope the governor doesn't hide behind some technical issue. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to right now, but it would be good if he did. And I, I, he should be disclose. to see what he says tomorrow about that. Right. Make it, disclose the communication. You, you were w working in a public capacity with a public salary right. in a public role. Mm -hmm. what, what about that shouldn't be public? Does that uh, does that extend to um, I don't think it does but but you'd know better and uh, two two questions I, w I wonder if you saw Darnell Early's um, opinion piece in the in the free press over the weekend and does the does the uh, protections that are afforded the governor does that include emails between uh, him and his emergency manager well can we get access to those that's a good emails question. And so we, forth? we should we should get access. Because, again, even, even though it's an appointed person, you're still talking about taxpayer money, yeah. taxpayer-funded salaries. It's, so we, it's all public. There's a U.S. attorney looking into this, right? Mm -hmm. The, the uh, attorney general, Schutte, announced that he's investigating it right now. Has anybody talked to you? Do you expect that you'll end up uh, talking to some of these folks? I haven't. I haven't heard from. I, I can. I can't. I can tell you what I know. I haven't um, been contacted by any of those investigations. The only, um, the only thing I've uh, been contacted about so far has been uh, Snyder's original task force that yep. he announced in October. Right. Um, that did an interim report that was, you know, highly crit critical of the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, they're they're doing a, a round of uh, city interviews. I understand later in January, mm -hmm. and I've got one or two possible times to, to meet okay. with them, which I, I certainly will do. I, I think all this has to be investigated and reviewed. Um, you know, of course, I think that's important for me because I, I want the public to understand what I knew, you know, what I didn't, um, what other staff knew that they were either deliberately hiding or yeah. that they just didn't share for whatever reason. And and all those questions have to be answered yeah. because this this should have never happened. No. It, it can't ever happen again, yeah. you know, in Michigan, and um, it's got to be fixed. You know, one last thing, just on, on some of this, and then I want to, I've got to, we'll switch gears just a little bit uh, and kind of go back to the de the decisions that, that led us to this point. But, uh, you know, with the, with, the, with the use of phosphates, I, the, for me, you know, this is something where you don't, deal with very often i don't imagine deq does very often either i mean this would be interesting to find out where you go from one source to another and so you don't have a lot of opportunities to interpret the uh the lead and copper rule but it was pretty clear like uh, uh dr edwards dr mark edwards he was livid about the the approach that they took in their interpretation and was very insistent that they were wrong in maintaining that they had to have two rounds of testing completed before they could even introduce these phosphates. There's, there's just no way that that's right. And they ended up, they fought it all along and eventually said, well, yeah, you're right. Um, why? I mean, is it just ignorance and competence or is it about money saving? I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you think, what do you think is more likely? I mean, th th this is why it has to be investigated because <clears throat> I'm, I'm someone I, I've, I've served in a public capacity. I, I believe you have good people in government who you know, are, are doing their best. But something, something went terribly wrong. And, and the people e talk about $100 a day, but this was a little bit more than that. We talked, you said it's a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to actually do this treatment, to have the infuser, the equipment needed to, uh, to. It's not just the cost of the phosphates, there's more to it than that. Yeah, the, you, you had to, um, you know, install the, the equipment and storage. And these aren't large costs for 
Two hundred thousand uh, dollars. I bet if they had it to do over again, I bet everyone would be adding funds. Well, it a- absolutely should have been two hundred thousand dollars a year. It, it, it's it's not it's not significant for what Flint's customers were already, you know. So paying. what? So what? So how can it be money? I mean, how can it be money when it's two hundred thousand dollars? I just can't. I can't comprehend that. Yeah, uh, I, I've seen some people comment who have worked with the Department of Environmental Quality on other issues that there needs to be a culture change in the organization. And in, in, instead of believing that you're always right, yeah, you know, let's let's do what I was saying. Let's let's have all the results of tests disclosed. Let's have a public debate and dialogue about these different decisions because you know we learn after the fact that there were emails from EPA staff right. who who do see issues all around the country, right, raising questions. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't this resolved in February of 2015 mm-hmm. or March of 2015, mm-hmm. where the the exposure could have been limited and the phosphates could have been added at that time? And and I don't know the answer to this, but somehow, didn't the, you the say State the Department of Environmental Quality, you know, they they weren't listening. Back in February of 2015, uh, Bob Bocock came in town. This was one of the things that he brought up. Mm-hmm. Now, he also referenced the original study the, the, uh, that was commissioned uh, to look at the switchover. They recommended phosphates treating uh, for, for corrosivity right from the beginning, didn't That's they? For, yeah, when the city was look, uh, looking at the river as a potential long-term source, because, you know, all options were on the table. Mm-hmm. You had the river, Detroit, and KWA, mm-hmm. and, and that report in 2011 mentioned the need for corrosion control because, again, every other community— Meaning the is, advanced corrosion control, yeah, the phosphates. The, advanced, the phosphates, Not right. lie, which is what he originally said. Yeah, and then Bob Bocock raised the issue. Uh, the city's consultants, Veolia, uh, included it in their report. See, there was— wasn't ever there wasn't ever a question about the, how does MDQ the disregard these these recommendations from they, the beginning? The DQ kept insisting that there that those decisions would be made after the tests. I mean, it's it, it, it's just that simple. That it wasn't. If a little bit it, of lead gets in, it's not that big a deal. We'll fix it later. That's the that's because ultimately that's they what, kept saying that was what was required under the law it's required under the law that you have these two rounds of tests and, and as late as september when congressman kildee senator Annick and i were all in the room with the department of environmental quality and uh, in september epa staff in lansing a 15 after dr edwards result had come out right and and he was very forceful about raising these questions Every, the, the deq was sitting in that room saying this this is what's required when a water source is switched in response to his insistence and it was then a couple weeks later that director wyant admitted that it was not applied right from from the beginning so um that that's why these investigations are so yeah. important. If if they're not going to, if emails aren't accessible under FOIA, then the U.S. attorney needs to figure subpoena. out how to use subpoena power to to get that same information. Interesting stuff. Uh, hang on tight. We're going to take a, a quick break. We'll be right back. We're talking with uh, with Mayor Dane Walling. Back right after this. Flint's News Talk, fourteen seventy WFNT. Cranberries Cafe will start your New Year's off right with their Cranberries Winter Martini Night. On Saturday the 16th, featuring a free orange herb buffet. Then on Sunday the 17th, enjoy a South American wine dinner where you'll enjoy a five-course meal paired with five wines for only $40. Reservations are required, so call 810-636-3409. Australian Pub Night is Saturday the 23rd, so gather up your mates and feast on some munger from Down Under. Just a quarter mile west of M15 in Goodrich, that's Cranberries Cafe. Hey, we're back again with another Back to Vegas Challenge. Got a new question for you, so listen up. Remember, if you get it right, you and your boo could be on your way to enjoying a complimentary three days and two nights in Las Vegas and two tickets to the hottest show in Vegas. Other than guaranteeing your arrival with a small refundable deposit, you won't be paying a dime for your accommodations. The producers of the game show, Lovers or Losers, with TV icon Todd Bridges are picking up the tab. Thanks, Todd. Just be one of the first callers at 844-41-PRIZE. It's that simple. Okay. This movie is about a British secret agent who's frozen in time in the 1960s and is brought back to life to fight his number one nemesis and his cat. Yeah, baby! Was that movie A, Diamonds Are Forever, B, Lethal Weapon, or C, Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery? Got it? Then it's time to call 844-41-PRIZE. I know you know the answer, so call now. 
844-41-PRIZE. That's 844-41-PRIZE. Your locally owned HealthMart Pharmacy is committed to helping you and your wallet stay healthy. As a retired teacher, I look for ways to save money for the things I love, like traveling the world. Medicare plans change each year. Fortunately, my Health Mart pharmacist helped me understand my insurance saving me money on prescriptions. They can help you too. Start saving for the things you love. Visit healthmart.com to find a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy near you. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Have you purchased gold? Did you overpay in commissions? How much did you pay? Do you actually know? What are your coins worth today? You work hard for your money. Pay their high commissions or get more gold. Call Goldworth. Discover what big dealers hope you don't know. Request the Insider's Guide free. Don't buy another ounce without it. Call 800-257-GOLD. 800-257-GOLD. Visit goldworth.com. Hi, everybody. Mike Gaylord from Everything Classic, the antique and collectible show on the radio. Join us every Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Flint's News Talk 1470. We take calls at 743-8255 or toll-free 866-533-1530. Call in your items. We'll give you a value. Join us every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Flint's News Talk 1470. I'll be looking for you. You be listening for me. All right, we are back. Flint's News Talk, 1470 WFNT. Sure appreciate your time this morning uh, talking with uh, Mayor Dane Walling, going in some of the background on these, uh, how we got to where we where we are right now. Obviously, this is a, a huge problem. MDQ, we spent a lot of time talking about this. This is something that uh, obviously is going to be looked at closely with the investigations. U.S. Attorney looking at this. We've got uh, the Attorney General. Uh, Shooty's going to be looking at this as well. And... Uh, uh, Interested to see what the governor has to say tomorrow in the State of the Union. But I want to go back and talk about uh, how we ended up with Flint water to begin with. And you've got a lot of folks, including uh, Darnell Early in his uh, piece over the weekend, talking about the decision was made to go to, to Karagnandi um, before he came on board. They looked at it. They agreed with it. Um, it was still up in the air at the time. I remember a piece in M Live with you thinking originally we would stay with Detroit Water until Karagnandi came online. That was one of the thoughts that, that people were thinking. And the problem, and a lot of people, even the timeline, the Detroit News or Free Press did a big story a few weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago, uh, with this timeline that they laid out. And they left completely out of the timeline the letter in May from. Detroit Water, April or May, saying, you know, it's going to be $48 million a year in the interim to take water from Detroit, which was a huge increase in the rates. That was a big factor in the decision-making, wasn't it? I, I think so, um, but it, it it didn't have to end there. Um, you're right to say that, you know, it was in March of 2013 that my both myself, city council, and current emergency manager, Ed Kurtz, all came to the conclusion that long term the city of flint would be best served by getting on the new pipeline and that was kwa now the thought originally was also supplemented a little bit by the flint river that's that was something council put in their motion okay was they said you know 16 million mgd from from the new pipeline and if needed you know the the rivers uh, available um i I didn't want to see us utilize the river in that capacity. It's, it's always been our backup supply. Right. And treating it for a day or two is, is one thing. Right. Um, but the decision to go to KWA, myself, city council, emergency manager, everybody, everybody on board with that. And that went all the way up to the governor, state treasurer. Everyone saw the benefits of the city. And I can tell you, and, and Darnell Early was serving in Saginaw, and he needs to stop commenting about this because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Every financial projection that was shared with myself, city council, and, and I understand with the state, all showed Flint staying on the Detroit system in 2014, 2015, 
and and actually in 2016, assuming the pipeline got a few months behind, you got to be financially conservative, and then in 2017, you'd start paying, you know, KWA. That was the discussion in March of 2013. That's what myself, city council, the emergency manager endorsed. And then you're right that once that vote was and discussion was public, yes, then Detroit, who we've paid over you know a billion dollars for water over you know 40 50 years mm -hmm. sends the city of Flint a letter right. that says you know the, you're getting your 12 month notice letter mm -hmm. as you know proper under the contract and mm -hmm. technically they were right mm -hmm. the contract did say that either party could terminate the relationship with 12 months yep. um, because we were extending year to year at that point we did not have a long term contract right you were on year to year yep. that's why we were debating the KWA mm -hmm. And that's where the county and the city went two different ways. You know, the county, and Jeff Wright's leadership was was right to go back to Detroit and negotiate, you know, the the best deal possible, and to stay on Lake Huron water. The emergency manager in Flint went a different direction, and we all saw. You know, uh, so you're saying at this point now, uh, this was when when did the when did the first when were you you were elected in what 2012? Well, I was first elected in 2009. 2009. Re-elected re -elected in 2012. November 11. Of 11. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, odd years. Okay. So, um, the emergency manager took over in December 2011. 2011. All right. So these decisions you're looking at this already. Um, and the, the city's deciding long-term this is the way that we're going to go. Council, yourself, uh, agreeing with this. Right, March approved. of 13. March of 13. Right. Detroit uh, letter. Detroit letter. I think was very early April yeah. of 13. Yep. Saying, you know, you got 12 months. Okay. And the county, again, the county goes back to Detroit. Even with the state's help, you're under, you're, you're under yeah, this emergency right. management. Right. The county's able to, to negotiate a deal to stay on until... But the but the city of Flint under emergency management with with you know you got Detroit in crisis as well in the meantime yeah emergency managers in both cities so you've got so you you've got and the and the governor can't say hey we want to do this at some point there were people locally who thought it's it's going to be okay to stay with the Flint River in the meantime this is an opportunity to to take control of our own fate and do this. And leave Detroit. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and, and when we was that you as well? Did yeah, you? Yeah, when we got to April of 2014, you know, fast forward a year. So the emergency manager makes the decision. Dollars get spent. City staff get hired. Yep. And you get to April 2014, and I'm there. You know, I I push the button. Yeah. You know, the ceremonial right. yep. switch. Yep. Um, and I was told that the water was meeting all the standards, that it was comparable with Detroit. And, and this is the tragedy. We now know that there was one major difference. Detroit water had phosphate corrosion control. Well, and it was more, it was less and, corrosive to begin with coming from the lake as even, opposed to the even river. So, well, yeah. whatever you start with, because, yeah. you know, all kinds of water gets treated all across the state. Yep. You got wells, you got rivers, sure. you got lake, all kinds of different water gets treated. But when we were all told that the water was comparable with Detroit in April, May of 2014, when we first started, yeah. it wasn't true. Yeah. Because the Detroit water, since the early 1990s, had had the phosphate corrosion control yeah. to make sure that old lead pipes that had been in the ground yeah. for decades had a protective barrier right. and, and the water didn't, didn't leach the lead. And that, that should have been said then. I should, you know, I, I needed that information then. We, we needed to know when we made that switch. Oh, yeah, the water's testing the same with pH and alkalinity, but there's one major difference. Detroit water has phosphate corrosion control, and this water doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that was never, you know, it was never put forward. Okay. Hey, listen. We're going to take yeah. a quick break. We've got uh, we, we're going to come back and uh, and wrap it up. I want to find out what you're doing now. What's next uh, for you? We'll okay. do it when we come back. Thanks, Let's Sam. news talk. Fourteen seventy WFNT. 
fast, affordable, and delicious. Isn't that what you're looking for when you go out dining out? Well, that's exactly what you get at the Venus Family Restaurant for over 30 years. Clean, fresh, fully stocked salad bar, breakfast starting at $1.99 at the best conies in town. Venus can cater parties, too, and they got great lunch and dinner specials. Give them a call at 810-235-6911. Great place to go. Always delicious. Always great service. Located on Fenton Road, near the corner of Hill Road, the Venus Family Restaurant. EJ's Beads and Boutique has 800 pair of earrings for just $2 a pair. $2. I yelled at her, what are you doing? You could sell these for 10 times that. But they're constantly making new ones in her jewelry classes, and Pam's not in it to make money. Although, she sells just about enough $2 earrings every month to pay the rent. I said, people probably resell them. I don't care, she replied. Pam doesn't do this to get rich. She does it because she loves it. And as long as I'm self-sustaining, as long as my husband doesn't have to pay, I'm happy. And her husband's happy because there's a new home for all Pam's beads and jewelry. PJ's Beads and Boutique on Saginaw at Judd Road, Burton. Buy one, get one free is the type of offer you expect at a grocery store. Buy an avocado, get a lime, free. You don't expect it at an appliance store, unless that store is Thomas Appliance. Right now, get a free 50 series Electrolux dishwasher with the purchase of one of four qualifying bundles, like any Electrolux front control freestanding range and qualifying over the range microwave or hood. Get the dishwasher free after mail in rebate. Upgrade your kitchen now with simply amazing Electrolux appliances. See store for details. Where else but Thomas Appliance? On Saginaw, north of the point, Grand Blanc. Having friends visit from out of town, or do you need a quick stay vacation? Well, then come to the Holiday Inn Express. It's close by and a beautiful place to spend some time. Located in the heart of Lapeer in the shopping and dining district. And, of course, a friendly and helpful staff. Not to mention their heated indoor pool, fitness room, complimentary breakfast, microwave and refrigerator in every room, too. Located on M24, just north of I-69. It's all here at the Holiday Inn Express. Wow, this uh, this hour has flown by. We sure appreciate you coming in. So, what are you what are you doing right now, Dane? What's uh, what's going on with uh, Dane Walling? Well, I'm I'm working on that. I I didn't uh, plan to lose this election, so I'm <laughs> I'm not a Plan B kind of person. Yeah. I, I had time you know, over over the holidays with my family, and my, my father actually um, suddenly passed away. Yeah. So I, I spent just a lot of time sure. with the family and and reflecting. Um, on my time in, in, in service, which I, I still am very, very privileged and thankful to have had that opportunity. Yeah. And, and I, I, I feel like I have a lot of unfinished business here in Flint. There, there are things I know we need to do to move this community forward with economic development and get better tied to the rest of the region and um, revitalize our manufacturing sector. Uh, so I'm working on uh, where I can do that from. Gotcha. And, and taking my time to make sure I, I find something that I'm and passionate right about back. and will help me have a, 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 a impact on this community in a positive way. Good deal. Listen, uh, thanks so much for being in. We really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Anytime, Dan. Thanks, everyone. Flint's News Talk, 1470 WFNT. Keep it right here. Conversation with Jason Cooper. He's coming up next. He's also going to jolt you into January. Got a great prize package for you to win in just a little bit. That's next.